Good morning, fellow privateers. Welcome to the week ahead outlook from your friends at Privateer FX. I think I tweeted this out last week. This is a line I've been following for a while. <clears throat> this weekly acceleration line, if I scrunch it up, you can see where it all started back in January of 18, which was the start of the Volmageddon or a couple of weeks, you know, that big big blow up. Anyhow, so you can see here last, uh, you know, two weeks ago, we closed way up here, 33.38, near the all-time highs. You can see here on the weekly, we had a clean break, 30.88. It went down and tested the half fib of the whole move from the December 2018 uh, December Christmas Eve I think was low the actual low so this is the swing the markets following and you can see where it closed on the week where we had a big pension rebalance so the last 15 minutes of the day the S&P's rallied like I don't know 80 90 100 handles in minutes it was one of the crazier month-end rebalances that I've seen into the close so we settled you know we tested the intraday low was 2852 ish which is a half fib so we know that this is the swing that the market will be paying attention to and we closed right around the one third the news flow over the weekend is getting worse a man in Washington State died uh, the, the numbers keep increasing. You, know, you can follow this all on Twitter. Um, Chris Mortensen puts out a, uh, a YouTube every day updating. You know, he's been warning about this now for six weeks, month to six weeks. It's kind of been way ahead of the, way ahead of the news, the, the, the you know, the normal news services and, you know, way ahead of the government's. He thinks this is only, you know, we're still in the early stages. Um, you know, think about sporting events being canceled. Uh, I saw something over the weekend about the NCAA, the March Madness, which is a huge um, tournament, basketball tournament, college basketball tournament. People, they play all over the country. People fly in from all over the country to see their alma maters play and there was some talk about the teams playing in empty stadiums so you know you've seen some of it in Italy uh, in the Premier League where the teams are playing in empty stadiums I mean this the transmission effect is you know, so severe and so high that um, I wouldn't be surprised at all uh, to see more of this going on in the states as more people get tested. Um, school closures or, you know, wor yeah, working from home, studying from home, you know, a lot of these schools, high schools, colleges, they do have online. They can teach online. I wouldn't be at all surprised. I've got two kids and, you know, two teenage kids that are in middle school and high school that, there's a good chance in the next couple of weeks they'll be studying from home. And I know that sounds a, a bit dramatic, but uh, I think that's where we're going. Um, I'm not worried about kids because I think that, you know, they're, they're in general, they're, they're healthy. They have good immune systems. You know, they can fight these types of things. Um, you know, the people that are dying generally are, older, they have had chronic illnesses, respiratory, you know, or organ issues, kidneys, whatever it is. And their, you know, their immune system is already weak. So they, then they're at risk. So, um, you know, I don't think we're going to have to worry too much about that. And, you know, a lot of the talk of warmer weather as we approach spring here in, in the Midwest, should help kill off this virus as we as we come to the end of the flu season, but you know, that's still another month away in the in the way that the 
number of cases are increasing globally. Um, you know, another month is, makes things a little bit, uh, it's, a, it's still a little bit scary. So market finally woke up to this. We've been talking about it for several weeks. We just didn't understand the complacency. I mean, all of the sentiment data, you know, the put call ratios, all these things were making extremes. And yet we had this virus looming in the background. The market really think this is going to be contained to China or to, to the Far East, you know, China, Japan. Absolutely not. Um, you know, I think Italy last weekend added to the some of the, uh, the risk off and, you know, the market finally waking up. And then we were saying even on Monday, you know, it's just a matter of time. It's going to be in the States. And sure enough, you know, several cases in Washington and California and they're testing in New York. And um, So every day it's uh, the news flow will continue to deteriorate and it's going to keep this, the volatility super high and equities under pressure. Um, it looks like on the open here, uh, we look at one of these spread betting indexes on the weekend trading and it looks like the U.S. equities are probably going to open down about 2%. Um, you know, currencies are not, not, let me just double check my Bloomberg now. Um, I don't believe they're, they are updating. It looks like dollar yen is down, is down about, uh, where do we close on Friday? It's down about 80, 80 pips. Um, the euro is up a little bit. You know, Australian dollar, we closed at 65.15 on Friday. We're trying trading down about uh, just under 1%. So we're definitely seeing the risk off in the currency markets. And again, we're kind of in the twilight zone. It's only... Uh, it's really only midday here in, in, the, in the States. So, you know, we've got about four and a half hours till the equity open. But at least first glance, it's it's responding to what would be probably a, about a 2% gap open lower, um, which would be about 65 handles in the S&P. So let's say we open somewhere around 2,900. Now that's going to change. I mean, we've got a lot of time till we open. Anyhow, enough of rambling. I want to get through these charts real quick and then leave you to it. Um, so the weekly acceleration line that we talked about, I think we tweeted this on um, clean break, talked about the support. 20% correction, which we're definitely going to get, um, I suspect, in the next day or two, would be all the way down to 27.23. I think you'd probably get a bounce. My guess, if you see that, if not sooner than that, you'll see a response from a, a global coordinated um, stimulus, uh, you know, central banks from around the world. Uh, there's already talk about Bank of Japan um, stepping in before the open today. I would imagine the Fed, the ECB follows. Um, you know, China will have more stimulus. And that you'll get a nice bounce out of that, but at the end of the day, we're still early days in this correction, um, which ultimately I'm thinking we could correct. I, I wouldn't be at all surprised if we go all the way back down and test these lows, and that's you know 600 some points from the close on Friday. Um, but look at the daily in the S and P. Uh, let's look at this chart. I don't have that line that I was showing, but uh, anyhow, the, the break of 3100 would really got things going on the on the S and P. You know, Nasdaq obviously. I think the S and P's down. I think it closed. Uh, it's about 11 percent from the all time high. Nasdaq ugly week as well. Touched this kind of 8150 area, um, but if we want to run the fibs, you know, the same swing which the market is clearly paying attention to, that would be, uh, it's only retraced a third. So the, you know, the NASDAQ is, is definitely outperforming, but you get a half retracements here, and 
the two thirds down around 7,300. So we, we definitely expect more of that. Um, 10 year, 10 year yields closed two weeks ago, 147. This is amazing. New all time lows, 10 years. The VIX closed around 40, you know, gapped up on, uh, on the open last week where we had uh, two weeks ago where we closed at 17 and this is pretty amazing as well. You can see the Volmageddon or no, this was the, this was the December 18. No, this was a February 18. Yes. Sorry. This was Volmageddon. That makes sense. I mean, there's all VXN and all these products of ETFs, short ball products that are now basically gone. Um, got up to 50. I think we've been as high as a hundred in, um, the VIX back in 2008. Let's see if I let's see if TradingView has got it. I don't know how accurate this is because this is off TradingView. What that's call it call it pretty close to 100. So why not? This is the Black Swan event that nobody is positioned for. Nobody was expecting. Um, you know, all the bears have been completely carried out. I think the bottom, you'll, you'll see a bottom. I'm not, I don't know when, you know, it could be a technical level. It could be, um, I'm going to look for some sort of, um, some sort of, you know, technical signal somewhere down 2,300 to 2,100 in, in S&Ps where I think we get a, a pretty good trading bounce. But it'll be when... You see market capitulation in the large cap tech fang type stocks, the ones that people have been hiding in for years and have done extremely well. When you see that, you know that they've thrown in the towel on long equities and you know sentiment will be at two or something crazy. I think it's around eight right now. They can stay down here for a long time. Just as two weeks ago, sentiment was up at 96, 98 in, in U.S. equities and European equities. And, you know, so we were talking about going from massively overbought to now approaching very oversold and, you know, from greed to fear all in the space of a couple of weeks. Let's take a look at the currencies real quick. Um, dollar max is interesting. We had a um, we've had a complete washout of Euromax. Euromax shorts were some of the favorite short positions. It was earning great carry for the past year or so, as witnessed here in this weekly chart. Um, especially that kind of Q4 19 until uh, two weeks ago. It, you know, it really got going from 20, uh, excuse me, phone's ringing. Uh, anyhow, so a complete washout. Uh, Dollar Max will, will go take this out this week, is my guess. Um, you can see it stopped here at like 1987, so just, uh, just below 20, which is a psychological level. Dollar Yen is now reacting to risk off. And they're seeking the safe haven. Still think there's massive structural problems in Japan, which will uh, not be good for the Japanese yen. But in the meantime, you can't fight the tape and you can't fight the uh, the normal um, correlation between equities and uh, Japanese yen or Swiss francs. So here's a daily chart in dollar yen. You know, we had that GDP number. And Big short coming or in dollar covering in dollar yen. We were expecting it to get up, you know, closer to 114. But um, you see here, we did not close below this low 107.67. It was down there, and then it rallied kind of hard. There was a huge fix too in the currencies on um, on Friday for month end because of the the big equity moves and bond moves that we saw in February. And it was one of the bigger fixes I've seen in a long time, uh, and it. Essentially, 
um, the most obvious trade was just, they were selling cross yen. So they were selling Aussie yen and Kiwi yen and Cat yen and Sterling yen, Euro yen, and um, pretty much put in a low right around the fix window and then had a nice little rally and then got another boost with that pension rebalance on the close, the equity close. But all that is, uh, is coming unglued. Uh, you know, dollar yen, this is an updated um, dollar yen. Let me just check. We're trading 107.03. We're trading about 107.10 uh, right now. So, you know, we closed Friday, so it's down about 100 points. Um, and below last week's low. Let's take a look at a weekly and try to get some support levels here. Um, we, let's just do a Fibonacci. That line up there is bad, but I don't, I don't know what that was. That was the old weekly breakout, so we've, you know, we've come back below that. It came in around 110. Um, so Friday it got down close to the two thirds Fib, and now, you know, the next area of support would be 106.24. So another almost 100 points um, lower than where we are trading in the twilight zone. And then you got this 104.50. Um, so who knows where, when and where, but I guess as we get down there, Aussie just making multi-year lows. Take a look at a monthly just to put things in perspective for the Aussie dollar. This is goes way back to like, you know, 13 on this chart. Those old lows were 68. And all then we had lows here at 67.50. Um, oil looks awful. Read somewhere today they think it's going to 25 bucks. Why not? Um, what else? Tesla. Look at where Tesla closed. I put something out about the. Oh, that is crazy. What is that? That's the monthly. Here's a. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to tweet this. Um, hold on a sec. Tesla monthly. That is one ugly looking chart. And look where it closed. I tweeted something out that there was um, support. I think it was on the weekly. I think it was from my Bloomberg charts. But there was a Fibonacci level that came in. I think I was using this swing. It was last summer's low in June. Yeah, on Bloomberg it came in at like 666, you know, the, the devil's favorite number, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, in line with that, if the S&P is correct 20% from the all-time highs, that 20% number is, I think, 666 points lower. I don't know, just saying. Look back at <clears throat> look back at the S and P 500 back in uh, 09 when it bottomed the, the lowest 666. So anyhow, um, I'll shoot that tweet out that Tesla month, monthly chart. But you know this has been one of the you know the shorts got completely carried out. Um, there were there are funds that went under that blew up um, on that on that last short short squeeze. We tried it a few times, failed miserably. Um, so that's everyone's favorite um, day trading stock, Tesla. Um, I think that's it. I'm, I'm gonna. I need to get on my Bloomberg, and I need to start um, getting some getting a game plan together for the open. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, good luck. Be careful out there. We are. We've gone from extreme greed to extreme fear in the space of a week. Markets can be very become very dislocated. Um, as we saw last week, and we expect more of the same. Really, I'm hoping that we can get some sort of um, tradable bounce. I don't think we get that unless we have a coordinated uh, global response from the central banks, which um, could come out in the next few hours before the open, which is now uh, you know, about four hours and 15 minutes away. So be ready. Be ready for anything, and we'll update you folks on the European Open. All right, stay safe out there. Good luck. Cheers.